I've got a hot little tip for you to help you shoot better. It won't take but a minute. And in 2010, I was getting ready to shoot in the Texas Mid-Range Rifle Champion Championships. And I had a rifle ball. I thought I could just win every thing with it. Shot it and, and, and eighth M MOA or better. And I had robbed a, a, a Night Force bench, bench rest scope and put on it. Thought I could just hit anything. And so when I was getting ready for that match, the muzzle brakes are not allowed in those matches. So I had to take my normal muzzle brake off and I had to put a flash hider on. And so I was getting ready and so we were trying to, you have to shoot two rounds for a spotter. You shoot two spotter rounds and you shoot 20 rounds for score in each one of those relays at the different yardages. So in these uh, really nice precision rifles, you know, I don't get out there and, you know, shoot 20 rounds pretty quick. I just don't do it. You know, we shoot a lot. I really like the guns. I want to take care of them. I just don't want to burn the, the uh, throats up on them and shorten the life. I'm not one of those guys that will go take a, a nice rifle and put a 30 round mag in it and go out there and just see how fast I can pull the trigger just to see how fast I can pull the trigger. Because you're burning up the throat, it's not good for the rifle. So anyhow, as I was getting ready, so the rifle was sighted in when I changed, put the scope on, had it all sighted in, and I changed the muzzle brake, put the flash hider on, everything was sighted in. And there was just a dead flag day, just no wind. And so what I want to do was I want to try and get the timing pace of shooting the two rounds and the 20 rounds for score and have time left over. So if I had to adjust a swing or something, I had some time left over. So I was uh, sitting there shooting, and with that, that really nice rifle and really nice scope, I was sitting there watching my point of impact as the barrel would heat up. I was watching my, my point of impact shift, and you could just watch it. So the first time I was, I was thinking it was a sling or something I was doing, so then the barrel cooled off, and I was right back on the, where I had zeroed the rifle, I was right back on target. So I start, uh, just start right off uh, again, and I'm timing myself, and I'm going through my 20 rounds, and I'm watching my point of impact shift. It cool off, and it go right back. So I'm trying to figure this out, and it was a ghost I was chasing, so what I did was I called the best long range shooter I'd, I'd, I'd ever known, and I was trying to ask him, okay, what am I doing wrong? You know, I'm shooting Cody bullets, I'm trying to keep the barrel tent down, what am I doing wrong? I told him the rifle I was shooting. He said, okay, you took your brake off, you put the flash hider on. I said, yeah. He said, how did you mount the flash hider? I said, well, with the crush washers, like everybody does. And he kind of chuckled and he said, okay, well, this is an easy fix. And I said, do what? And he said, I, he told me that he never, ever put a flash hider or a muzzle brake on with a crush washer. Or some of the really nice brakes, and I've got some that I like that have shim washers, a few thousands, and you put a shim washers in and you tighten it down, and that's how you clock it is with a shim washer, but you tighten it down. He said, what you're doing is you are preloading a stress in the barrel. And he said, so when the barrel heats up, it does some of those weird things. He said, he said, yours tracks the same way and goes back. He said, they don't always do that. But he said, you're putting, you're pre-stressing the barrel. You're loading a torque into the barrel. And I said, that little bit makes that much difference? He said, well, sure, you're, you're shooting 600 yards. I said, is it really that easy? He said, well, screw it off. Put a couple of drops of blue Loctite where you can get it off and just screw it back on, finger tight. He said, don't even tighten it. Just screw it down, clock it, let it dry, go shoot it the next day. So the next day, I had a little bit of a wind. The day after that was another dead flag day. Flags hanging limp, so you could really shoot and see what was going on and not wonder if it was a wind or not. And it was just perfect. And I thought, this is nuts. Everybody puts on a flash hider with a crush washer. And uh, of course, most people don't shoot that far or they don't get to shoot in a perfect ideal condition with no wind where they can see what it's doing. 
So from that day forward, I've never, ever used a crush washer. I throw it over my left shoulder for good luck. I've got some nice brakes I like that came with shims to lock them down. I throw them over my left shoulder for good luck, and I've always put them on from that day on with just a few drops of Loctite, screw them on, let them sit, and shoot them the next, the next day. Of course, the smaller, the, the thinner your barrel is, the more it will uh, affect it. So if you have a hunting weight barrel, it's, it's way worse than it is with like a, like a, nine, like a 920 barrel. But anyhow, it really, there are some little tricks that are that simple and that easy. And we're going to show you a whole bunch of them. Because I was chasing that ghost, wasting time, chasing that ghost. Thank goodness I asked the right person to fix it. But we're going to show you a bunch of these little tricks like this. So be sure to sign up for the YouTube channel. And we're going to be posting little tricks that we've learned over the last 50 years of shooting to help you shoot better. And if you sign up for the channel, you'll know when they come out and you'll be able to see them. Thanks a bunch for watching.